Endocrine disrupting hormones. <laughs> what about them? What do we need to know? What's what, endocrine what, disrupting what chemicals? Endocrine disrupting chemicals. Sorry, not hormones. Yeah. yeah right. Endocrine disruptors in general, problematic, pervasive, ubiquitous. So I remember when I was in, I don't remember what grade it was in, maybe sixth grade or seventh grade. We did these like spelling things and I learned the word ubiquitous. And the association with ubiquitous was 7 Eleven. So ubiquitous. So think about as every time you see a 7 Eleven or like a grocery, st a convenience store, I want you guys to think about endocrine disrupting chemicals because they are pervasive. They are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. And who knows how much of an impact they have on humans. But again, it's no better, do better. Um, I would like my testicles to work for as long as possible, as well as possible. And unlike James Cameron, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want mine to work as well for as long as I can. And to me, that means doing as much as I can intentionally in my life to minimize end endocrine disrupting chemicals. So we talked about PFAs a little bit, forever chemicals, cue the echo. Yeah. Those are a known endocrine disruptor. They're in plastics and they're in Lululemon leggings. They're probably in Nike leggings. They're in, they're potentially in the little you know those running shorts that have the built-in underwear for dudes or the mm. bathing suits that have the built-in underwear, yeah. potentially in your jujitsu compression shorts, all these things potentially have PFAs. Okay, change your underwear, change your clothing. That's not too hard. What about your coffee cup? You go to Starbucks, that's a paper coffee cup. It's lined with plastic. That can have PFAs in it. And it's you're putting a hot liquid in it and then you're drinking it. So that's potentially very bad. Yeah. You go to Whole Foods in the hot bar or Erewhon in the hot bar and you get a sample of their food, and that is a paper container that looks like it's biodegradable, potentially recycled, but it's also lined with plastic, which can have PFAs in it. So anything that's plastic is generally a source of PFA contamination. Why are PFAs bad? It's a, it's a forever chemical. That means it, it just like exists. It's really hard to break down. It's hard to break down in the environment. Yeah. Um, and when we ingest them, they look like hormones in our body. Predominantly, they look like estrogen. <laughs> which isn't good for men or women because excess estrogens are bad for women. Excess estrogens are bad for men. And if you, when I actually look into this, there is some hard data. It's a bad pun that the penises are shrinking and that the anogenital distance is shrinking in men as we evolve as humans, as we move on. And this is potentially contributing. This is potentially connected with these xenoestrogens, not just PFAs. There are many others like phthalates and parabens, which we can talk about. So, but it is scary because we think of this anogenital distance, which is essentially that if you measure the taint, the distance between the testicles in a man and the anus. This is Shana Swan stuff. I think yes, I this that. is Shana Swan stuff. Yep. Yeah. But this anogenital distance changes. So we know that when animals are exposed to PFAs, phthalates, xenoestrogens, this distance shrinks, which is feminization, and it's, it's dangerous. So it can also be in the water, which is a great argument for purifying your water, potentially with reverse osmosis drinking spring water, because if you go to the environmental working group and you look at Austin, Texas, for instance, there are probably no less than 27 environmental pollutants that are above the level that you'd want in your tap water in Austin, a collection of pharmaceuticals, pesticides, heavy metals, other problematic things, just in every water supply everywhere in the world. It's, you're never going to get a pure water, especially in your tap water. And we know that these pharmaceuticals are persistent. So you know, people put pills down the toilet, women take birth control, they pee it out. It's like, there's a lot of contamination in our water supply of excess estrogens, excess progesterones from women, other pharmaceuticals, statin drugs, proton pump inhibitors. It's just crazy, the pharmaceuticals that are potentially in our water supply. Mm. So back to endocrine disrupting chemicals. The other one that really gets me, this is perhaps the one that I hate the most, but it's just my subjective experience, are the fragrances, which are usually the phthalates. This is kind of like that word pterodactyl. It has an extra H and a TH, and it's a weird spelling word. But phthalates are they're, they're fragrances. So I in Costa Rica, which is where I spend a lot of time right now, I took my car to the mechanic, and I get it back, and the whole driver's seat just smells like this guy's cologne. And I sit in the car, and then I smell the cologne on my clothes yeah. because there's a fragrance phthalate that's just meant to do that. It's meant to stick on things and cause a smell. You get in the Uber and you see the black ice, um, you know, pine tree in the on the rearview mirror, and the whole car smells like it. What does that mean if some people get a headache from that and some people don't? I get I mean, a gnarly headache. Some people are more chemically sensitive. Even walking through the airport. Oh yeah, like the duty free thing where they like force you to walk through the like the, the, just the bullshit. Yeah, you know, and all the perfumes, and all the things. Uh, Ten seconds of that 
I walk away and I, I have this lingering headache that I have to like kind of work out of myself. Is that, is that, am I, am I alone in that? No, there's a lot of people with you. I don't think we understand why some people are more chemically sensitive than others. There are many hypotheses out there, underlying toxicity, underlying issues with your detoxification systems. Everyone has different polymorphisms. Everyone has different genetics, the level of their liver and their ability to detoxify things. Maybe you're just not good at detoxifying that. Mm. But what that tells you is that even if you're smelling it, you're ingesting it. Yeah. So when you're in it's an like elevator, it's like a fart. It, yeah, it's going into your body, right? <laughs> like you're smelling somebody's <laughs> fart. You're literally eating their fart. You're basically eating it's their amazing. ass. You're eating their fart. Like just chop it up and put it on a sandwich. It's a fart sandwich, Science. right? Yeah. So you're, if you're smelling it, you're ingesting it, and yeah. because it's going into your body, and that's that's scary because you think, oh, I'm at the gas station. I'm smelling gasoline. I'm ingesting gasoline. Yeah. That's problematic for humans. But on the topic of these phthalates and these parabens and these xenoestrogens. I get in the car, it smells like my mechanic, like I'm ingesting his cologne. I get in the Uber with the Uber driver. He has a black ice pine tree in the window. I get out of the Uber. All my clothes smell like the goddamn black ice thing because it's on the seats and it's on me. This is the problem with these fragrances. Even today at this Airbnb, I'm staying in Austin and this is the level at which people are going to be like, man, this guy, Paul, is crazy. The garbage bags are now scented. Oh, they're terrible. And they're so strong. Yeah. And I had to take the garbage out and my hands smell like the garbage bag fragrance. Yeah. So say I take the garbage out and then I go to peel an orange and all this fragrance is on my hand that I'm now putting in the orange, which I'm ingesting, it's, it's in my body. So they're impossible to avoid, but knowledge, power, know better, do better. And minimizing your exposure across as many things as possible is critical. So what fragrance is on your clothes from your laundry detergent? What kind of sheets are you sleeping in? Are you sleeping in polyester sheets? What were they washed in? There is this other chemical not connected with the fragrances necessarily called 1,4-dioxane, which is a probable carcinogen in humans. You may have seen this in New York recently outlawed 1,4-dioxane containing detergents that have more than two parts per million. And there are multiple. And then there are multiple that have less than two parts per million, but still have 1,4-dioxane in them. I think seventh generation free and clear had zero parts per million. I just use white vinegar when I wash my clothes because it's pretty cheap and easy and safe. I think about this a lot when I travel. What are the towels in the Airbnb that I'm going to stay at washed in? What are the sheets in the Airbnb that I stay at washed in? And I will email the people and say, hey, can you wash them in a fragrance-free detergent? I may even bring white vinegar or wash the sheets in white vinegar. Again, this is me. This is my level of involvement in this. I will bring sheets when I travel now. I'll bring 100% organic cotton sheets that I know are washed in white vinegar. And I just throw them on the bed. I don't have to worry about it. But it's still like dish towels, towels, like the fragrance is everywhere. You don't have to completely change everything in your life if it's too much, but just changing the detergent you wash your clothes and everything in your house in will significantly decrease your exposure to 1,4-dioxane, potentially phthalates, parabens, and other problematic things for humans, just for you and everyone in your home. While we're on this topic, talk about dishwasher detergents and dish rinse detergent, like dishwasher rinse aid. I didn't even know this is a thing. I haven't used a dishwasher in years. I hate dishwashers. Just philosophically, I hate the idea of taking a dish, putting it in a machine, having to wait an hour and a half, then it comes out, then I have to put it away. It's just like, I'm just going to wash the damn thing. <laughs> like, how is it so complicated? Why it's just, nice with like a dinner party. I just, then you, I think like, that's when a dishwasher comes in clutch. You, but, got, you got 10 plates of, you know, all the things, appetizer, the whole thing. But when just I have it, but when I have a dinner party, like, then it's me and my friends at the sink and we're all bonding. Like we're all working together to clean up. It's like just another part of our social interaction. Not a bad thing. Get that. I like washing dishes. So I just like to break the plates after <laughs> say, fuck it. You don't even need that. Move even, on. You don't need to wash them. Yeah, especially if you're at Airbnb. Yeah. Just break the <laughs> shit. <laughs> Who cares? It's true. I mean, why am I even washing the plates? Yeah. Uh, so that's the problem is it? so these contain and laundry detergents also contain this chemical. Um, I'm just like doom and gloom right now. Alcohol. <laughs> alcohol ethoxylates, and those are linked to gut damage. So that's really interesting because you think, I go to this Airbnb, and if they've washed the dishes in dishwasher rinse aid or dishwasher detergent that contains alcohol ethoxylates, and many of them do, and I eat food off of that, I'm ingesting something that can damage my gut. And again, look, if people listening to this have perfect ghost poops every time, you don't have any gut issues, then keep doing what you're doing. Who you cares? Ghost poop? Ghost poop. What does that mean? Like it doesn't even happen? Like you, ne you don't you wipe you wipe and there's nothing there. Oh, I've never had a ghost poop. You've never had a ghost poop. <laughs> I don't think so, bro. We need to hang out more. <laughs> I have ghost poops all the time. Really? Yeah. <sighs> there's nothing on the toilet paper. Wow. You I don't, don't use toilet paper, so I might have ghost poops all the time. I don't realize. What do you use a bidet? Yeah. 
That's what I use. Or a shower. I do not (laughs) touch my asshole with toilet paper. That's where I stand. Did you know that many toilet papers contain BPA? I do know that. So that's crazy because when you think about... And bleach and bullshit. And it's just a waste environment shipping like these dead trees across. Like if you had a little fecal matter in your arm, you never in a million years would say, hey, bro, can you grab me a rag? There's some feces on my (laughs) arm. Can I just kind of smear that in a little bit and then move on with my day? You would never do that. No. I choose that for my anus as well. Yeah, I agree. That's my flag. But I don't, there's no, I guess I'm at the Airbnb. There's no bidet, so I have to get in the shower. Sh- shower, yeah. Jump in the shower. Take the shower. pants off. I literally, I go, I do a hip hinge, you know, and I drive it back and I do a little, sh- and I'm and I'm out of there. A natural bidet. Natural bidet, bro. You don't even have to take your shirt off. No. Just like roll it up. Well, I'll take my shirt off because I like to look at myself in the mirror. <laughs> Crop top. <laughs> pants go down. Butt in the shower. No, but it's interesting because you, I think... Women, so back to the Lululemon PFA and the crotch conversation, yeah. like, I just think it's scientific fact that like women pee two to 2.5 times as much as men pee because their bladders are smaller or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Like women pee like six, eight times a day, man. They do pee a lot, huh? I don't pee eight times a day. But every time a woman pees, they wipe with toilet paper right on their vagina, like very absorbent mucosal tissue, Right. And apparently it's like a front to back thing. I get it. Okay, whatever. You don't want to do back to front. That's bad for women. But you're taking BPA containing paper six to eight times a day and wiping it on your vagina. Mm. That's not good. Mm. I mean, you and I are taking BPA, would be taking our the less intelligent versions of ourselves, the less in, intentional versions of Aaron and Paul. Mm. We'll take BPA containing toilet paper and wipe our anuses two times a day or once a day. Mm. But yeah, so ghost poop is when you wipe... <laughs> It's when you wipe with toilet paper and you don't see any like that's a ghost any poop. shit. Yeah. I, now I know the title of this episode. Ghost poop. Ghost poop of Paul. <laughs> how, Paul to, Saladino. how to have a ghost poop. How to have a go- so how do you have a ghost poop? I think that it has to do with like very little inflammation in your gut. So generally I have ghost poops when I'm eating less fiber. So if I do more fruit juice, less fiber, and meat and organs, the ghost it's often ghost poops happen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but I do prefer it's the like bidet. A leprechaun. Yeah. Disappears out of nowhere. It just you're like, wow, four leaf clover in my butthole. <laughs> it's the equivalent of four leaf clover. Right. But the flip side of that is perhaps more important, where you think, you know, if, if every time you're going to wipe, you're using up four times toilet. You're like, man, you just keep wiping four or five times. You're like, there's shit on the toilet paper. There's shit on the toilet paper. There's shit on the Jesus Christ. It's like grease factory back there. What the fuck is going on? Right. Like you and I know, like if you've had a GI bug or you have diarrhea, like it takes more to wipe your butt and get it clean. Oh, yeah, it's you're, a process. you're doing the it whole wrong. Project. Yeah, you're doing it wrong. You should be using it. I'd rather day. hire somebody <laughs> <laughs> with a squirt gun to just squirt your butt. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it's a, a lot. Hire a little Carp- leprechaun. Carpal tunnel. A leprechaun. Yeah. <laughs> Said anything. A leprechaun could wipe your butt. That's for racist. You. We'll have to edit that out. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> is atrazine making the frogs gay? That's an Alex Jones quote, I think. Yeah, and yeah. What is atrazine? And atrazine is a, uh, it's a pesticide and it ends up on a lot of grains. Yeah. So atrazine is, uh, I think it's a pesticide. Yeah, it's a pesticide. There's, it's, it's not a mold toxin. It's a pesticide that ends up on a lot of gr- grains that is, and again, a xenoestrogen. Mm-hmm. So how, what can, what can a humans do? And this perhaps would be more relevant for to reduce feminization through, um, environmental contaminants. So we, this is the whole conversation we've just been having, right? Yeah. Phthalates, PFAs, plastics, limit all that stuff, polyester on your junk, the water you're drinking, the food you're eating, all those things. And plastics even worse if they're getting heated up. In, even if they're getting heated up. So let's talk about BPA water bottles, BPA-free yeah. water bottles. That's a scam because BPS and BPE mm-hmm. are other bisphenol agents that are probably just as estrogenic as BPA. Mm-hmm. So I, in my own life, I aspire to never drink liquids out of plastic period Mm. right so you just there's gonna be some cross-contamination the longer the liquid is in there the hotter the liquid is in you know the container that's plastic the worse it is but i certainly have not 100 percent eliminated all food contact with plastic in my life i think the biggest thing for me is that when i buy meat it's often packaged in plastic and i haven't figured that out but for me if that's the one percent left or the two percent left that's great yeah. Because there's, that's much lower than less intentional Paul from 10 years ago. I'm drinking water in plastic. I have a plastic Nalgene bottle. I'm heating water in the Nalgene. Who knows, right? Yeah. That's a big, <clears throat> something that I learned from you actually four years ago or something that I, I just didn't know is that the, the plastic lining of cans. Yeah. That's an interesting thing. And they all really, cans. They really sneak it in like every angle. 
I don't know if they're sneaking it in. It's just that those cans are aluminum and you can't have whatever's in the can in direct contact with the aluminum because the, then the aluminum will leach into the liquid and that's bad too. Yeah. And then who knows how long that can or bottle or whatever was just been baking out in the sun in some factory in Indonesia before it oh, yeah. to your doorstep in oh, yeah. Texas. And this is soda cans. This is seltzer water cans. This is ranch water cans. This is alcoholic seltzer cans. This is mm-hmm. everything in a can. And then water is a, is it a solvent? Is that the term for it? So well, it, 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 it will leach whatever it's in some sense yeah hence why water helps you know be able to pick up stains and such because it will it will it'll it'll pick it up it can pull it that's what it does yeah yeah so you're essentially drinking like this bpa thalite steeped tea by the time it arrives to your doorstep potentially in certain in certain situations potentially not always yeah yeah but bpa in the lining of cans is crazy because people don't think about that right you think about your what is it Lacroix or whatever whatever water you want to drink out of a can and it's just it's 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 a lot of places. 